Example three. These questions, okay, this involve combustion. This is combustion, right? Okay, they say alcohol is combusted. Okay, this this is liquid. Actually, this is liquid. Eh? Liquid. This is gas. Um, the heat of combustion is uh, five hundred and sixty kilojoule per mole. Eh? Okay, and for combustion, so this per mole is per one mole of the substance burned. Is per one mole of uh, this uh, methanol. Eh? Alcohol. This alcohol. This alcohol is methanol. Okay. So per one mole of uh, methanol burns means that when there is one mole, one mole of methanol burns, uh, it produces uh, five hundred and sixty kilojoule. Okay, kilojoules of heat energy. But then the question says that the the question would like us to find the amount of alcohol burned when there's a release of one hundred and forty kilojoule. Okay. So it means that if this is 140 kilojoule, how many mole of the alcohol burns? How many mole? Eh? Not, not the mass. Eh? Okay, tell me the number of mole first. How many mole of alcohol burned? The number of mole is equal to 140 kilojoule divided by 560 kilojoule. So it's uh, 0 0.25 mole. Eh? Okay. One mole, 56 kilojoule. This one only 140. One four one four zero kilojoule means uh, this is this must be less than this, right? Because the amount of heat release is less, uh, so the number of mole must also be less. So the number of mole is uh, one four zero kilojoule divided by five six zero kilojoule. So it's zero point two five mole, eh? two five mole. Now we have the we have the number of mole of uh, alcohol, eh? okay? Then we can find the mass by using the formula number of mole equal to mass divided by molar mass. Okay, molar mass. Uh, if we want to find the mass, we must have the molar mass. Uh, and the molar mass, the molar mass is always equal to the uh, relative molecular mass. Uh. So the molar mass is equal to uh, the relative molecular mass. Uh. And the relative molecular mass, this is a CH3OH. Uh. So we have one carbon, uh, one carbon. The mass of one carbon is 12. Uh. So 12. Plus, and we have four hydrogens, uh, three hydrogens plus one hydrogen, four hydrogens, and uh, each hydrogens the mass is uh, the relative mass is one, so four times one, and then we have one oxygens, okay, one oxygens the mass uh, the relative mass is sixteen, so we plus sixteen, so the answer is equals to thirty two, uh, thirty two gram per mole, so that is how we find the molar mass. Uh. The molar mass equals to the relative molecular mass. The relative mo molecular mass is equal to the sum of the relative atomic mass. Eh? 1 carbon, 12, 4 hydrogens, 4 times 1, and then 1 oxygen, 16. Eh? So this is this is equal to uh, 32 gram per mole. Okay, now we have the molar mass already, then we can find the mass. Eh? The number of mole is uh, 0 0.25, right? 0 0.25. The mass, we don't know, that's what we want to find. And the molar mass is 32, yeah, 32. Uh. So therefore, the mass of the alcohol burn is uh, 0 0.25 my, multiplied by 32. Uh. This 32, I multiply to another side, okay? So 0 0.25 my, multiplied by 32. So it's, it's equal to 8 gram, right? The mole is for alcohol. Yes, yes, okay? This mole is for alcohol. Why? Why for alcohol? Because this is heat of combustions, and heat of combustions when we have this a uh, five six zero kilojoule per mole. Uh, per mole means per one mole, and this per one mole is per one mole of the substance burn, and the substance burn is CH three OH right the alcohol. Uh. So this one mole is one mole of alcohol. Per one mole of what? Per one mole of the fuel or the substance burn and the substance burn is the alcohol so this one more is one more alcohol so therefore this number of more is also number of mole of alcohol alcohol eh? h equal to one yes this is the relative atomic mass of uh, hydrogens eh? okay but we have four hydrogens right three hydrogens and one hydrogen four hydrogens therefore it's four times one eh? four times one okay we have four hydrogens this is heat of displacement eh? okay we use zinc to displace copper. Yeah, zinc to displace copper, so the copper is displaced. Uh, this one is AQ, aqueous, and uh, zinc is solid. 
uh, zinc sulfate aqueous and uh, copper is solid S. The question says uh, calculate the heat change when excess zinc powder is added into 50 centimeter cubes of copper 2 sulfate solutions. Uh, cancel this, uh, this uh, sulfate. Copper 2 sulfate solution 0.2 mol per decimeter cube and this is the equations and uh, the heat of uh, reactions. Negative 190 kilojoule per mole. Okay. Um, as I told you just now, this is a displacement. This is displacement reactions. Okay, and this uh, kilojoule per mole. Eh? Kilojoule per mole is per one mole of the substance displaced. For displacement reaction, now the heat of displacement is the heat released when one mole of the substance displaced. Uh, so means that one mole copper displaced then uh, 190 kilojoules of heat released eh? uh, and this question it says that the copper sulfate solutions eh? the copper sulfate solutions the okay this mole per decimeter cube what is this eh? can any of you tell me this 0 0.2 mole per decimeter cube what is this Faisal say this is molarity that's correct okay this is a concentration eh? this is a constant Concentrations, okay, concentration, and a uh, concentration in mole per decimeter cube is also called molarity, yeah, okay, molarity, and the symbol for molarity is capital letter M, eh? so the molarity is equal to zero point two mole per decimeter cube, so that is the molarity, and then the volume, the volume is uh, fifty cm cube, eh? the volume fifty cm cube, now this is a solution. This is a solution and we have the molarity and the volume. Eh? So can you please tell me what's the formula that uh, we should use to find the number of mole? N equal to mv over 1000. Eh? Okay, mv over 1000. Uh, the molarity is 0 0.2 and the volume is uh, 50, eh? 50 cm cube and then divided by 1000. Uh, when you use this formula, mv over 1000, okay, the v is in cm cube. Eh? This is cm cube, okay? Because some students they say, "Hey, teacher, this one we use dm cube, okay? So how can for the molarity we use uh, dm cube, and how can the volume we use cm cube, okay? Because uh, uh, the the unit must be consistent, okay? But for this formula, mv over one thousand, okay? Uh, this one we use dm cube, this one we use cm cube. That is that's because we divided by one thousand, eh? because when cm cube divided by one thousand, then it become dm cube. So this V divided by 1000, we change this CM cube to DM cube. So you don't need to uh, use DM cube here because uh, when we divide by 1000, then the CM cube will be converted to, uh, the CM cube will be converted to DM cube. So always remember, so when we use MV over 1000, uh, this V is in CM cube, okay? Not DM cube. Eh? Uh, by using your calculator, you should get the answer 0 0.1, eh? 0 0.1 mole. So the number of mole is uh, 0 0.1 mole. But this is 0 0.1 mole of copper sulfate. Eh? 0 0.1 mole of copper sulfate. Uh, from this equation, we can see that uh, 0 0.1 mole of copper sulfate produces 0 0.1 mole of copper, right? Because uh, one copper sulfate produces one copper. Eh? Okay, so 0 0.1 mole of copper sulfate will produce 0 0.1 mole of uh, copper. So 0 0.2 times uh, 50. Okay, 0 0.01. Eh? 0 0.01. Uh, let's erase this. Okay, 0 0.01 mole. Okay, so the number of mole is 0 0.01 mole. Now, one mole copper uh, displays 190 kilojoule. Okay, so now we have a, we have only 0 0.01 mole uh, copper display. So the heat change is what? The heat change equals to 0 0.01 multiplied by 190 kilojoule. Uh, this is equal to 1.9 kilojoule, okay? 1.9 kilojoule uh, heat released. 1.9 kilojoule heat release eh? when this amount of uh, copper 2 sulfate solution is uh, displaced by excess zinc uh, powder. Yes, the answer is 1.9 kilojoule. I would like you to try this. Okay, now this question, I just now I forgot to tell you that uh, it should give you the relative atomic mass eh, of uh, carbon, which is uh, 12 and uh, oxygen, which is 16. Eh, okay, 
So they must tell you the relative atomic mass of carbon and oxygen. Uh, only, then only you can do the calculations. So with this uh, relative atomic mass and uh, oxygen, we can find the molar mass of carbon dioxide, uh, which is uh, 44 gram per mole. Okay, so continue. Okay, so what's the final answer? 314.8. Uh, first of all, okay, we must know the molar mass. Eh? Okay, because uh, we from the molar mass, we can find the number of mole. So we find the molar mass. The molar mass equals to the relative molecular mass. Uh, one carbon, two oxygens. Eh? One carbon times two oxygens. Uh, the relative atomic mass of oxygen is 16. Eh? So two times 16. So we get 44 gram per mole. And from the molar mass, we can find the number of mole. We take the mass of carbon dioxide divided by the molar mass, then we get a uh, number of mole equal to 0 0.8 mole. And uh, from these equations, uh, we know that one carbon produces one carbon dioxide. Eh? Okay, so when the carbon dioxide is 0 0.8 mole, then the carbon must also be uh, 0 0.8 mole. So the number of mole of uh, carbon is uh, 0 0.8 mole. Eh? So the heat release is 0 0.8 multiplied by 393.5 kilojoule, so it's 314.8 kilojoule. This is negative, huh? uh, so why the negative is eliminated in the calculations? For heat of reactions, we don't know whether heat is released or absorbed, so therefore we use negative to denote that uh, heat is released. Okay, so the negative tells us that heat released, huh? but since this one huh, already stated that heat released, right? Heat released, huh? so you don't need to use a negative to tell that the heat released, right? So because it say heat released, huh? so you don't need to use a negative. Okay, if if you write heat change, uh, then you should include the negative. So the neg the negative tell us whether the heat is released or absorbed. Eh? So since it's, it's already stated heat release, so don't need to put negative. Okay, because they want us to find the heat release. But if they want us to find the heat change, uh, then you must include the negative to indicate that heat is relieved. Eh? The negative indicates that the heat is released. So so it's not that we change to positive. It's because it's already stated heat release, so we don't need to include the negative. Eh? Okay, so this one, uh, okay, this is also a displa displacement reaction, uh, zinc displaces copper, so it becomes zinc ions and a uh, copper, okay. So figure above shows the energy level diagram for the displacement reactions between zinc and copper 2 sulfate. Find the change in heat when excess zinc powder react with uh, 500 cm cubes of copper 2 sulfate solutions, 2 mole per decim in the cube. Okay, so uh, this is the solutions. Okay, and we have the volume and the molarity here, so we can find the number of mole of uh, copper to sulfate, eh? m equal to uh, mv over 1000, and um, the m is a uh, 2, 500 divided by 1000, and this is equal to 1 mole, okay, 1 mole, eh? so copper sulfate 1 mole, eh? This copper sulfate, this one, this is one one mole, okay? And uh, if, if copper sulfate or copper ions one mole, then the copper displaced is also one mole, eh? Okay, one mole. So if the copper displaced is one mole, then the heat release is the same, okay? Because this 217218 kilojoule, uh, I suppose that is, is per mole, eh? okay? 218 kilojoule per mole. Eh? This 218 kilojoule per mole is per one mole of the copper displaced eh? so per one mole of copper displaced so this case the the heat release eh? or the heat change find the, the change in heat energy okay so heat change uh, they would like us to find heat change so we say heat change equal to um, 1 multiplied by 218 kilojoule eh? So it's equal to uh, 218. Okay, this should, we should include, ne include negative uh, because this is heat change and uh, not heat release. Uh, so we must use the negative to indicate uh, heat release. So it's equals to negative 218 kilojoule. Okay, so the heat, heat change is 218 kilojoule. Uh.